coming up on AC 24 7 the growing migrant crisis in New York City how much the city's mayor says it'll cost to care for a constant influx of people seeking asylum plus a former police officer is found guilty in the 2019 shooting death of a black woman in her home and we'll take you on the red carpet to the premiere of Avatar the way of water Welcome to AG 24-7, I'm Lamont Baldwin. Now, New York City officials are among those struggling with the tens of thousands of asylum seekers who've arrived. 31,000 to be exact, according to the latest count, about two thirds of whom remain in the city and need permanent housing, legal services, and winter clothes. The Advocate Channel's Omar Jimenez has more. Tuviste miedo? Demasiado. From Venezuela to Colombia, Central America, Mexico, and then by bus from Texas, eventually to New York City in July, Dailin Rojas says she was frightened nearly every step of the month-long journey. The first fear is the jungle, she says, navigating threats of possible violence, disease, and more, alongside her husband and son. In the middle of it all, the three of them found out she was carrying a fourth, she was pregnant. By the time she had gotten to New York, the harsh conditions of her travel had taken a toll. I got sick because I came with a urinary infection from the trip over, she says, was hospitalized because of the baby, the beginnings of a potential abortion. But in November, her daughter was born, symbolizing the future she came here for in the first place. Her journey mirrors the more than 30,000 asylum seekers that have landed in New York City since the spring. Some on their own volition, some sent on a bus from Texas to make a political point. As of this week, more than 20,000 migrants remain in the city's care. And it's part of why Mayor Eric Adams declared a state of emergency in October, estimating the city will spend roughly a billion dollars on the influx of migrants. We need help. This is some serious money that we're spending because we're doing the right thing. Mayor Adams says he plans to ask for more money from FEMA ahead of the expected lifting of Title 42. But as the weather gets colder, the reality for care and the incoming migrants is changing. We see people arriving in T-shirts and still sometimes even in flip-flops, um, and they don't have proper winter clothes. We, have, we see people, little kids with, you know, uh, babies showing up wrapped in a blanket with a diaper on and no, no winter clothing. So that is a huge challenge. Most of them have been coming for a tropical country. Robert Gonzalez works with the New York-based group Venezuelan Alliance for Community Support, working to help connect migrants with resources like social service, mental health, and more. He knows while the journey here is difficult, an equally difficult one lies ahead. To find a job, to learn the language, to be ability to, you know, to, to understand and to integrate to a, a, to a new system and a new culture. They want to be able to grow up, yeah. you know, like a, a other people coming to the United States looking for that. Rojas' husband is now working, but since they got here in July, a baby later, they've been in shelters, still in one now, trying to to endure. I asked her what she wants for her future here. ¿Qué quieres para tu futuro aquí? We're waiting for the year to end to put in citizenship papers, to become legal, she says, to get work. We're taking English courses. We're in this process to try and bring our family, the kids that stayed, to build a future here. A jury has found a former Fort Worth police officer guilty in the shooting death of a woman in her own home. Aaron Dean and his partner were responding to what they believed was a burglary. Dean testified that he shot 28-year-old Antonita Jefferson through a bedroom window because he thought she was pointing a gun at him. Verdict reads, we the jury find the defendant Aaron, Dean, Aaron York Dean guilty of the offense of manslaughter as signed and signed by the presiding juror. Does either side desire a poll? You may be seated. Thank you. Twitter has banned the accounts of multiple journalists without explanation. The list includes the New York Times' Ryan Mack, the Washington Post's Drew Harwell, 
and CNN's Donnie O'Sullivan. All of them aggressively covered Musk in recent weeks. Neither Musk nor Twitter have explained the permanent suspension. Twitter shut down the account of emerging competitor Mastodon. When Musk bought Twitter, he touted it as a place for free speech and open expression. But these actions are now raising questions about those remarks. Former President Donald Trump is entering the NFT business. Trump announced on his social media platform, Truth Social, the debut of his official digital trading card collection. The ex-president says the cards now showcase his life and career. But the featured artwork also includes him as a superhero, astronaut, a cowboy, and others. Each card is $99 and is an NFT or non-fungible token, which is a digital collectible. The card can be purchased as a collector's item at trumpcards.com. The website notes the cards are not political and it says the money will not go toward Trump's 2024 campaign. Delivery giant Uber Eats is trying out new technology for its deliveries in Florida. These autonomous sidewalk trotting robots deliver takeout orders to some Uber Eats customers in Miami. This is part of the partnership between Uber Eats and the robotics firm Cartaken. The six built robots have several sensors and cameras to help them choose routes and avoid collisions. Customers who used the new service were alerted to meet the robot on the sidewalk. They then unlock the compartment with their phone to retrieve their order. Uber Eats says customers can opt out of the service if they would rather a human deliver their items. 13 years ago, Avatar was a must-see record-breaking spectacle. Avatar is still the highest grossing film that wasn't a sequel. Now Avatar Way of the Water is here. Now the movie picks up several years after the first movie with Jake and Terry starting a family. Director James Cameron also introduces an entirely new subculture of people on the planet Pandora. We cut up with some stars on the red carpet for the North American premiere of the movie. Let's check it out. Well, it's so exciting to be here tonight just to know we're going to share it with so many people who are so excited. And we've been so excited now for about 10 years, uh, having read the scripts and, you know, it was a, a wonderful project to be part of. And uh, Jim is a great director. Our ensemble is just wonderful. And so now that we get to share with everybody, it's just the best. It's exciting to share something that's this global in concept and uh, so meaningful. Uh, it's an emotional story and uh, also just a completely immersive experience. I mean, it was it was a wonderful experience. This was seven years in the making, you know, and, and five in the shooting, and we're finally here. I know that for the fans, it was more like 13 years. Um, good things are always worth the wait. Jim has been known for taking his time because he has that much respect and that much love for his followers, for his fans. And he knows that what made Avatar 1 special was the fact that there was a true love story. He needed to wait uh, for this story to sort of tell him where it wanted to go. And, um, and I'm so happy he did. It's been, it's been a blessing, honestly, praise God. But I just, I'm honestly speechless. It's like all the, diff all the different work that was put into it and all the different things that we got put through to, to be able to be a part of it. <laughs> It's just been wicked, it's been cool. I'd say for me, I've seen a little bit, I've seen just a little bit. And from what I've seen, I'd say family is a big part. Family is a huge part of, of it. I mean, you've got the environmental parts and all that, but it's like, it's family, yeah. Finally, finally, because I've been working hard for the last two years, and I, I guess back since 2017 with James Cameron, creating the Navi Sign Language. It took two years to create 300 Navi signs, and now tonight we get to see the real Avatar movie. At first, I have to admit that I was a little clueless. I had seen the movie Avatar, but I had an interview with James Cameron, and he said that he had chosen me. And so I rolled up my sleeves. I was excited and honored to work with Avatar in this company and growing with all of the cast and all of the talented people, everyone who is learning the Navi Sign Language, 
and the crew who was involved in also picking up those signs, it really felt like a family and it grew from there. In the center of all this turmoil and this beautiful planet lies a family that is trying to stay together, that is trying to raise their children and um, in times of war. Hey, thank you for joining us for HG247 for content that advocates for you. Go to theadvocatechannel.com, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on YouTube. For The Advocate Channel, I'm Lamont Baldwin.